All right, so this is the uh, Data Science Learning Communities Web APIs with R book club for my in progress book, Web APIs with R. And this is chapter nine, do other things with APIs. So the things hopefully we'll be able to do after this chapter is uh, we should be able to create um, new content through an API. Uh, we should be able to update existing content through an API, and we should be able to delete existing content through an API. Um, we should be able to perform multiple API requests, and we should learn more about making API requests with Hitter2. Um, and really, I think I meant, meant to say that more along the lines of, or yeah, we'll be able to do that. And so we'll we'll know how to go learn more because the idea is I can't cover everything that's in the package and a lot of it. I would just basically be reading the documentation to you. And so uh, part of the end of this chapter is kind of hot, finding your way around hitter two um, and uh, what to look at. Um, and I think I have a slide about that, so we'll see. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we wanna learn do more than get. And I will tell you what that means in just a moment here. So our mode inviting example, um, I made a Trello board. Um, the screenshot's a little bit out of date actually, but uh, it's a, um, Trello is a project management tool. It's relatively straightforward. Um, it's owned by Atlassian who also owns Jira, which is like the more complicated version of project management from Atlassian. Uh, but the general idea is that you have uh, cards which could be tasks or they could be just about anything you want them to be. And you put them into lists and then those lists you can display onto boards like this one here. Um, I'm using uh, this API as actually one of my test cases for this beekeeper package uh, that I am working on. And so keep an eye out for Trello R and that's why this is called, uh, if you see here, the Trello R Kanban board. Uh, but what we're gonna do, hopefully, <laughs> uh, is create a card, update its status, and then delete it. And so I do. I forgot about that, but I I need to um, also share our studio in a moment here so that you can see what we're doing. All right. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what what are we talking about? What's what's this get that we're doing more than? And you know what what don't what haven't we done yet? Basically. And so to do that, we need to think about what are the pieces of an HTTP request? So the requests we've been making to APIs, um, we've done a lot with URLs and headers. We talked about that, you know, using headers for um, the uh, user agent and for other authentication things. Um, but we, and we've done URLs with query parameters but what we haven't seen, what we haven't looked at are the method and body, these other two pieces of requests. Um, and we're gonna start with body and then come back to method. So a request body is uh, the data that you send like with the request. Um, you can do a lot of the same things through query parameters but a lot of times bodies <clears throat> will be something that's bigger or uh, something more private um, that you wanna keep more secure. Uh, technically with uh, HTTPS query parameters should be secure, but they still are just like printed on your screen versus the body can be like hidden and uh, kept away from prying eyes. Um, the most common way to attach a body is with this hitter to uh, function rec body JSON. Um, you'll probably almost always use rec body JSON uh, when you need a body, but there's also a uh, rec body multi-part. If you have um, like a file and then information about that file. So that one was also fairly common. Um, and then there's uh, this curl form file that just tells you what parts of your multi-part are a file. Um, we're gonna see a little bit about this in a moment, although I don't actually upload an image, so we don't see that much about it in this iteration. 
Um, and then rec body file, um, that's somewhat more rare just because usually it wants to know not just that you're giving it the file, but you know, that'd be if you just have an like image upload API and you don't give it a title for the image and you don't give it any other info, you just give it the uh, image, much less likely to be uh, a situation, but it can be. Um, and then the last two, uh, there's rec body form that you'll still see. Sometimes they tell you that the, the, the data you send has to be form encoded. Um, that is kind of a holdover from this, the oldest way to submit data through a web page was with forms. And then there's rec body raw. That's just kind of um, all the leftovers that you can just send in data and it will figure out what to do with that, uh, hopefully on the other end. Um, but again, rec body JSON is what you're gonna almost use, always use. It takes a request and then uh, an object that is the data, usually that's gonna be a list. Um, and then you can send in other arguments for JSON light to JSON, but um, like almost always, you're just gonna leave the, those as the defaults. All right, and so again, we're gonna see an example of this in a second, but first we wanna talk about uh, the other thing that we haven't used is request methods. So formally, um, we in uh, the types of APIs we've been looking at are called REST APIs. That stands for Representational State Transfer. Um, we will see some other frameworks in a couple of chapters. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the layout in the book um, should something like that is definitely going to happen and probably a big like appendix. Um, although to a large part, large degree, I avoid that to some degree because the package could change and I wanted to tell you um, where to find it in the live docs in case it has changed, but um, something like that for sure. Um, so, okay, formally we have these representational state transfer calls is what we're doing. And they have a formal definition where the paths that we've seen, the URL, that's supposed to be a noun. That is the thing that you are acting on. Um, some examples from what we're gonna look at in, in Trello would be cards, boards, lists, or members, or sometimes it would be like cards slash an ID for a card. So that, that would be a specific card, but it's still, a noun or a collection of nouns that we're acting on. And everything we have seen uh, has been with one method, which is called get. And methods are the verbs. So get means fetch that thing. That's why that's what we've been working with is we have this noun, maybe some parameters about it, but we want to we want to get that. But you can also post, which means send a new thing. Um, you can patch. Uh, which is formally change existing thing or put, which is replace an existing thing. A lot of times APIs will use those interchangeably though. And I did want to stop and point, you know, like really stress, this is formally what all these things mean. Um, but APIs don't have to implement things to actually mean what they're supposed to mean. So they could, you could have an API where you do a get request to create a new thing, or you could have an API where you do a post request in order to get data. Um, they don't have to follow the rules, but this is what they're supposed to mean. And you know, usually, hopefully, it'll be at least close to these meanings. Uh, the next verb is delete, which that one's at least really straightforward. That is for deleting things. And usually APIs will follow that, although sometimes they'll make you do a post request to a delete endpoint, um, but it should be that you do the delete request. And then there are a bunch of other ones that honestly, some of these I didn't know they existed uh, until I was really digging into um, to write this because you don't use these very often. Uh, there's connect for like starting two-way communication. We'll see a little bit about that in a couple of chapters. Um, options, I don't think I've ever actually seen this work, but it's supposed to tell you what methods are available at this endpoint. And so, um, that can help you kind of figure out if there's not good documentation, figure out what you might be able to do. Uh, head is 
um, as if you were doing a Git request, but it doesn't send back the whole thing. It just tells you what it is going to send back. That can be useful if you're going to like download something and you need to know, uh, is it huge or not, basically. And then trace will um, follow, like sometimes your, your request is actually bouncing around and trace gets to wherever the endpoint is and it's supposed to send you back um, what was the actual request when it got to that header to help you figure out how to route things properly. Again, not everyone will let you do that because um, that could theoretically be uh, like insecure, but uh, in theory that should work that way. Um, but again, the methods aren't strict. Uh, a lot of APIs will use either get or post and that's it. And they just um, set everything up that way. Uh, in Trello, I think it's put, it's either, they use either put or patch and I think it's put and they use it whether you are just changing a thing that already exists or replacing the entire thing. Um, and that somewhat makes sense because uh, if you are calling this thing that already exists, which is, you know, the ID is going to stay the same, whether you change every variable or replace it with a new thing that looks basically the same. Um, and yes, yeah, so when you're setting up an API, you, you decide which API or which methods will be available and what those things will do at each endpoint. Um, if we do the plumber half of the book, uh, that will, uh, we'll see a lot of that there. Um, a lot of, um, like modern frameworks, different frameworks that aren't, uh, formally considered rest basically use either get or post post and a different format for making for building the requests um like the bodies will have a certain meaning or or way that they're defined um and therefore the other things don't make sense anymore and so we'll see some of that again in in a couple of chapters um where they completely change the way things are set up there is also there are some older formats where it's all get based um, because it kind of evolved out of the web, which I don't really go into that here, but when you make a request to a web page, almost always, um, might be safe to say always, pretty close to always, the um, web browser is making a get request because you're getting the web page that you are trying to load. And so, you know, here, this is a get, this here is a get request to this URL. Um, and so the noun is this page, basically. All right. Um, so how do you specify a method? Uh, again, like I said, many APIs use get uh, and or post. And those are by far the most common uh, methods. And so by default, if you uh, pass in a request that doesn't have a body, um, hitter two is going to default to using get. So you don't have to tell it to use get, it's just going to use get. Um, but technically get can have a body, so you can still, you know, we'll see how you could still set that if you really need to. Um, similarly, if you if your request does have a body, then uh, hitter two is going to re default to post. Um, but again, maybe uh, you have a body, but it's actually a get request. And so you you need to be able to change that. Or maybe there is no body, but it's still a post request because APIs can break rules. Um, and so you can still set that if you need to. For everything else, and for those two, when they're a special case, rec method is the, uh, the function that you need. Um, like I said, you really, or you almost always don't need this. But, uh, oh, and sorry, this is like the arguments to it. You pass in a request and the name of a method, the method can be uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't care. And so you would say, or, you know, we'll see these again, but you know, you could put uh, delete in quotes for your method for whatever request you're doing, that would make it a delete. Um, it doesn't hurt to call this on uh, whatever call you're making. So if you're a little worried that maybe it will automatically choose the wrong one, you can just say rec method, uh, on your request and say the method is get, and that'll make sure that it's going to do get, for example. In some of the um, like automatic code that I generate from the API specs, I just have it 
um, put in the method and don't, you know, that way I don't have to worry about, okay, would this have automatically hit that method? Eh, it doesn't matter. Hitter two will uh, fill in the method if it needs to, but if you give it to it, it's not gonna complain. All right. All right. And so we are gonna do a live example. I'll, I'll have to switch windows in a second here, um, but just to set that up. Um, so that's right. So there are these API docs for uh, Trello. Um, and it has information about like how to authenticate. I'm I'm gonna rush over some of this, uh, but I did find it really funny that um, let's see if we can find. Oh, it's on a different um, somewhere in here. They talk about uh, it uses OAuth one. I didn't know anyone still used OAuth one. All the stuff we've been seeing is OAuth two, and so it's gonna look a little weird uh, when we go into it. But that's fine. It works fine. Um. And there is a, uh, oops, there is an API description available. So um, they have the full doc and yeah, we can see, oops, if I uh, close things up, it has this API key and API token that are required by everything. Um, and as we look at the uh, parameters, um, there's gonna be a lot of these that have uh, key specified because you need to give it a key. And a lot of times we also need to give it the token. And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. Um, and, uh, you know, this one, oh, and I've talked about this a little bit already that it's weird auth. Uh, it uses OAuth1. Um, here they use API key to mean basically the client ID that we saw back a couple of chapters ago, where you have one API key for your like your app, if you, whatever app you might make, which might just be your R code. Um, so you would need one API key for that. Um, I you So don't feel like you should know because they're using them to mean crazy things. And key and token, sometimes they mean the same thing and sometimes they don't. Uh, often token means an individual user. Like it, it's a thing that identifies a specific person and a key is kind of just your general, um, this is the thing I use to call the API. It's not like associated with a login necessarily, but it's not um, It's not really clear. And here, API key means OAuth client ID and token roughly means OAuth token. Um, but we can manually generate one. We don't have to do an OAuth uh, handshake. And so that's what I did for this setup that we're gonna look at. Um, and then the other piece of info information that we're going to need for this code to make sense is you're going to see this 6DK XRHRK. Um, that is, uh, oh, I don't have the board open handy, but um, yeah, duh. this is my board that we're going to be playing with. And that is just, that is the idea of the board. So um, we will see that. Uh, all of this, and you know, again, uh, why API key versus token isn't making any sense is all the specifications, including how OAuth is supposed to work, are like suggestions, they're guidelines. People can and do mess them up. I think this one might be right for um, how OAuth was defined when they made their API and they just haven't updated their API in 15 years or whatever. Um, so, okay. All right. Um, so I am gonna uh, throw in some extra, oops, uh, show you the right screen. I'm gonna throw in some extra commands as we go here, um, just because they're things we haven't covered. And so I wanna go over them. Uh, so I'm gonna set up a cache path. This, I am just telling it um, when I make a request, look here in this directory first. And if it already exists, don't make it again. Um, because I don't uh, want to keep hitting, like I keep, uh, well, in this case, we actually do want a different one each time. But if, if we're doing um, a lookup of like the the list of um, the list of lists that the board is made out of, I just want to do that once. I don't want to keep doing it, but I might not know if I have made that call yet. The cache path says, "Oh, you're making the same call. Here's the data." Um, all right, and then this dot rec UA was when we went over user agent. Um, this is my own little function that just puts together a user agent that is me for the book. 
uh, but this could be a hit or two rec user agent call. It's basically that it just has my values in there. All right, so we're gonna <clears throat> be going to this trello.com slash one. That is the, uh, oops, the core uh, server from the API spec. So trello.com slash one. Um, and we're gonna be sending in a key that I have saved in my key ring. So as qu carry per yeah, query parameters, we send in a key and token because that's what they want us to do. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to cache every request. If it's exactly the same request that I've made before, it will um, just pull up the request. And if it, the request has some, um, or the, the response will have things about whether it can be used from a cache. And so um, really we should be using rec cache most of the time. Um, if the responses are set up properly, if it's something that shouldn't be cached, like create this card, um, it will it will tell it, no, you can't cache this. I, I need to do a different response each time. So um, that's ha handy. And then I threw on uh, the rec retry that we had talked about before of um, if something goes wrong uh, and it's it tells us, like it says that we have a timeout, um, retry up to three times. That's what this is saying here. So this is my just like basic request that I'm going to set up. Um, and I will get my um, page with this set up before too long, except I don't have it handy. Okay. <laughs> I forgot that I was planning to do this. And so I don't have my, uh, my screen all set up to do it, but we'll get there. All right. Um, I lost, there we go. All right, so that's that's the basics. And so actually I am going to copy that and paste it into my window, which I'll switch to that window when we get there. Um, the next piece, if I can get my notes back up, I don't have anything new, okay. Is that um, we are, oh, this was supposed to print, but we're gonna get a, we're gonna use that to actually find out the list of boards. And so at this point, I'm going to swap, swap over and share uh, my R Studio. Um, there it is. Share. Okay, and let me um, just up the the zoom a bit to make sure that we can see everything nicely on the video. Okay. All right. So let me run these commands. Um, yeah. And so, uh, again, so this one, if we, we notice, um, there's no rec method in here. So this is just a get, but I need these to, uh, get some information. So there's the backlog, the to do doing and done. Um, I'm not sharing it right now, but that was just like the top of each of those columns on the board. Um, and now, okay, we're going to create a new card. And so let me pull this up. So a new card um, at a minimum, or at least what we want to give it is we're going to tell it what board to create the card on, um, which list to put it in. And we got that by saying, by getting that board list, and we just want the first one. Um, and so board list one um, has a bunch of different things about it, but it is the backlog. And so we're going to put it into the backlog I'm giving it a name that has these stars around it. So we'll be able to see it when I swap back over. I should set up the sharing better. I might do that in a second. Um, and then it's going to give a description that says that it was created in the book club or as the demo. And when we call it, um, so again, um, this one has a body. And so it is going to uh, be a, uh, uh, sorry, I lost my chat window for a second there. Um, but it, it's going to be a um, post request because it has a body and we don't tell it otherwise. And I just performed it. And if we look at this, um, oops, uh, it sent back the data that I gave it plus some extra things that I didn't specifically set. And so it's going to tell me all these other things about it. The desk is actually the one that we did set. But if, if I do like do, um, that's null because we didn't set it, but, um, and yes, uh, it, it, 
like it will uh if it has emoji in it it will just print into the console um and so that's kind of fun to see um but yeah so this the main the thing that happened here is rec body json um told it uh okay since there is a body then this is a post request um i want to let me see i'm going to reshare things in such a way that we can both see, or that I can alt tab basically. So one more time, switching the share, do stop share and then share that and where are you? That. Okay. And so now in theory, at least when I go here, um, yeah takes a second, but it's going to show both of those. Good. Okay. And let me get the chat back up where I can see it. Okay. <sighs> All right. So that's the, uh, um, that's the, the calls so far we have created a card. Oh, and I guess I should show you that we did actually create that card. And so newly created card is sitting here on the board. Um, for this next one, I'll show you the code I'm going to run and then switch to the, um, well, I don't think I can switch uh, the way I have it set up, but oh well. Um, so what we're going to do is move the card. Actually, OK, I'm going to change one more time how I am sharing, because I re realized the best way to do this is I'm going to keep you over in the window. This will show you um, how you know, you'll be able to see what I'm going to run. Let me one more time, stop share and then share specifically this um, and I will put the board over there. Um, and so just like, yes, uh, when it says this, that's what I'm actually going to run. So um, we'll walk through the code and then I'll actually run it. Um, we're saying, okay, go to the cards and then the actual ID of the card that we just set up. And in the JSON body, I'm going to tell it, um, some new data that is that the ID of the list that it should be in should be the second thing, which is the uh, second column. It's the this column here. Um, and let me chat back up so I can see. Um, almost certainly, you can do the same with Notions API to answer your question there. Um, these get thing done, things done type of apps uh, almost always have an API that will let you do things like this because they want you to plug it into your normal workflow. Um, so, all right, so um, we're gonna do this where we move it to the second list. Uh, but in this case, the the move, the, the like updating it, an existing card is a put method. So if we go to, um, see if I can find this in here. Yeah, so that's hard to see, but, um, oh, no, that's not the one. Uh, there it is, card slash ID, and it's got a get. That would be if we wanted to just load, but put, there we go. Put is update a card. Um, and so go to that URL, do a put request. That will update the card to be in that list. Um, I'm going to perform it, and then I'm going to save the response body just in case there's something I want to see in there. All right, and so let me load this up. There's the card we're looking at, and I will... Click the go, there it went, and it moved to the next list. Um, we, <laughs> all right. Um, I'm, and then I'm gonna go ahead and move it to the next column. It's all the same code basically, um, just with a different column that it's going to, but just to show you that, you know, we can keep sending different commands here. Um, and voila, that goes to the next, uh, next one. And then finally, I'm going to delete the card to clean up and put everything back to the state that we were in when we got here. So again, we're going to that same path of cards slash the ID of this card. But instead of doing put or get, we're doing delete. And that tells it, OK, go to that object and delete it. Um, and then we'll perform it and get back any response that it sends. Um, so, you know, formally, you don't need to 
deal with any responses that come back for things like a delete. Um, in your day-to-day -day work, you might just like fire these things off and let it be. But I, I do find it's helpful to at least save the response. I, I did this as one um, one pipe, but usually I would like set up the request and then do the perform and then save the response just to, or and then pull out the response rather, just to make sure nothing's broken. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. And when I call this, you know, keep an eye on that right there. I'm going to hit go now. And it deleted it. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, that, that kind of, that demonstrated the idea of we've got this single noun. We looked at, you know, we did the same noun a couple of different times, uh, but with different bodies and different methods, and it caused different results. Um, something else that, uh, you know, this kind of leads to is, you know, let's say you have a table of um, things that you want to track, you know, in Notion or in Trello. Um, the example I gave here, this is just a toy example, but um, we're going to give it a name that uses all of the state abbreviations that are built into R. And uh, the description is going to use all the state names that are built into R. Um, and, uh, you know, we can see that's the tibble that we have. Now, again, this is a toy example. Um, you probably will have, though, some real table of data. Uh, this would be, you know, let's say you have um, a bunch of steps you need to do for a bunch of different projects, and you want to just create this table and then create cards for all of them. Um, different things like that are things that you might need to do. Um, and so to, to do that, we're going to use a uh, PMAP from per. This is, uh, so in, in per map just means do something for each of the inputs. And PMAP says, I'm going to send an input that is a list, or in this case, a data frame. And I want to use uh, two columns out of that object. So the name and the description, because again, back here, we have name and desk as our columns. And for each of those, I'm going to create a new card uh, that is built uh, you know, like what we saw before, but it's going to use the name and the description that I send in. And then I'm going to create a request. I'm not going to actually perform the request, but I'm going to create a request that is at that cards uh, path and has this body that is the new card. So when I run that, um, PMAP returns a list. And so I will have a list of uh, requests. I've made all these separate requests, put them into a list. And the reason I did that is there are these hitter two functions. Uh, the first one we're going to look at here is rec perform sequential. And that will take everything that all these requests that we have in a list and it will uh, perform them. So it's going to perform all of them. And then there's RESPS data, which we saw back when we did uh, pagination, um, it takes a function that tells it how to get the data out of the response. So it, it's, it takes, you know, that list of responses that we're getting from rec perform sequential feeds each of those responses into a function, uh, which in this case, we're going to take the rest body JSON, um, and unnest it wider. And so we're going to take all of the data and put it together into one table. Um, and let me pull up the board when I do this, because that's going to be fun to see. All right, and I'm running it. And there we go. We are creating all of these 50 different cards. Uh, what I don't have shared, unfortunately, because I can't share all the windows, is um, it gives a nice progress bar. It says iterating 66%, 80%, uh, ETA three seconds. And so 96, 98, there we go. And that should be done. And if we scroll down here, you can see it goes all the way through Wyoming. Um, this is the kind of thing that, I mean, I don't have the exact use case for you, but I'll bet you'll have something to do with Notion with this that will make sense at some point. Um, I, I need to start doing this myself because I have uh, a board where I track um, Tidy Tuesday and there's a set of things that I do for each Tidy Tuesday, creating the card uh, for each of, you know, creating the, the list of cards for each of those would be pretty handy. And so I need to start doing that 
it's a different um, tracker, a little bit more complicated than Trello, but it's the same idea. All right, and now I wanna set up a bunch of deletion requests because I don't want those things clogging up the board. Uh, but you know, in real life, probably you wouldn't immediately delete them all, but you might. Um, actually, while I was experimenting with this, I created some things and then uh, accidentally ran the command twice. And so I had two copies of all the cards and I had to go through and do a get request to get the list of all the cards and like filtered those out to the ones I wanted. And then actually did immediately want to do a delete request to clean up all, uh, that mess. And so that's what's going on here. Again, it's the same idea. Um, we're going to card slash card ID. So we're, sorry, we're using all of those responses or all of those IDs we just created, but we could get the IDs from a get request some other way. And we are um, making a request for each of those. So Trello rec, rec URL, path append, and rec method delete. So a delete request for each of them. Um, and then I just wanted to squeeze in a way to see, it's not gonna be that cool here because it doesn't, um, they don't give us a lot of options for how parallel we can get on this particular API, but there is this function rec perform parallel. Um, it has a lot of uh, caveats when you read the help that it um, doesn't, uh, it's not like fully featured. You can't do retries when you're doing parallel. You can't, uh, it only checks the cache at the beginning. So if you gave it a list of the same requests over and over, it's going to make all of them. It doesn't have a way to check, Have it has it already made this request? Different things like that. But for something like this, where it's just flat out, I want to delete all 50 of these. I don't care if you, what order you delete them in. Uh, this is something where rec perform parallel can be really handy. And so again, going back to the list of cards, um, I am going to go ahead and run it now. And we can see that it is going through deleting. Again, it's giving me a progress bar and it's done. All right. Um, yeah. And so so that's that's uh, our basic idea. Let me see if we've got anything else in the notes. Notes. All right. So I, I did want to tell you like how to read more about Hitter 2 for whatever else you might want to do. Um, there's no point in me repl replicating the entire docs for Hitter 2. Uh, it, it's technically version, uh, I think it's 1.0.1 .1 now, which um, the one, if it's 1.0 or higher, that within the um, posit team, that means that it's stable, but they're still improving things. And so there are still things that are changing. So if I go over the docs uh, piece by piece, especially going into the more esoteric functions, uh, the less common the function is, the more likely it is to change basically to be completely different by the time you uh, need it. And so the first thing I recommend is go to the package down site for the package. Um, it's really pretty good. Like he's got a lot of um, articles. Well, he has a couple articles about how to wrap them, wrap an API into a package, how to deal with OAuth. It's a pretty good walkthrough of how OAuth works. Um, and then, you know, references for all of the different functions. Um, but if you're like trying to figure out how something works, um, another place to try is GitHub issues. Check out if someone else, like, you know, if you have some weird error message, put your error message into the search and see if anyone else has tried or has run into it. Um, and also, like, if you don't find anything in the open issues, I do recommend looking at the closed issues, especially recently closed issues. It's possible whatever you had is a bug, and maybe that bug has already been fixed. Um, and so I highly recommend going through and checking that. Uh, the way development works on their team is they tend to, like, focus on mostly on one package at a time. Um, there has been some work. Was it here? Um, well, yeah, it's been a month since there's been anything merged on Hitter 2, but there has been a little bit of movement that I've seen. Um, but he'll come back around at some point. And so, you know, you're probably not going to get, you might get a response right away, but you're probably not going to get a fix right away if something's broken. Um, and, but you'll, you know, this is a good way to, to see what's going on. And then likewise, you can look at uh, pull requests, that's PRs. Uh, if you look at PRs on the uh, 
on the repo. Uh, the X means that they, they failed test for some reason. And so um, that, you know, that can be a sign that those probably aren't going to be merged right away, but you might see something um, that, uh, you know, fits with what you're looking at and, you know, especially look for like a comment thread that has 18 comments in it. That might be a sign that there's something interesting or confusing or something going on there. And so it couldn't be worth going in um, and reading and see uh, what is going on. Um, and a lot of times like this isn't, exactly a case of this, but they, they might have information that kind of tells you, here's how to fix what you're doing. We haven't merged it into the package yet, but um, they might uh, show you how to fix it. Um, but I do want to talk about some functions that I'm not going to like show you how to use uh, right now, at least in the book. They might make it into the a later or into the book as they are more, more mature and I, um, you know, I'm taking longer to get there. Uh, so the first, there's like a pair of functions. We had talked about curl translate in one version of these slides, uh, not this chapter, but an earlier chapter. Rec template and curl translate, just I recommend reading about those. Those are alternative ways instead of the whole like rec request, or sorry, request and then rec URL path append and uh, rec method, all of that. Rec template can take just a string that describes how to make the request and string that all together. So that can be helpful. Uh, likewise, curl translate can take, if you have in the docs, the full curl call that you do in order to um, uh, make a request, curl translate can translate that into um, code or into hitter two code. Um, I say this as if we're not going to see it, but we actually may see some of this next week when we're looking at how to uh, find APIs because there are ways with your browser to find a the actual curl calls that your browser is making. Um, and so we'll use curl translate probably next week to see how to turn those into hitter calls, hitter two calls. Um, another set of functions that we didn't go into is there's rec throttle rec timeout and rec progress. Those are kind of um, like functions around uh, dealing with slow requests or um, multiple requests. Rec throttle is a way to kind of really uh, heavy handed um, slow down what you're doing. It's better to use rec retry because that uses some of the built-in uh, things. But if the API you're dealing with doesn't give you retry information, rec throttle can be helpful. Or uh, alternatively, if um, like you just don't want to make a ton of requests. Maybe it's uh, an API that costs money and you don't want to be making thousands of requests per minute or whatever. Uh, you can use rec throttle to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, rec timeout just is telling it how long to wait and rec progress gives you progress bars. So you can see if something is slow, it'll, it'll give you an update of how long it's taken and how much they expect uh, it will still take. Similarly to, or kind of related to that, there's rec perform stream. We're not gonna go into this at all because it's actually, um, it's had a, quite a bit of a development in the last uh, month or two at least. And I wanna make sure it's a little bit more stable before I talk about it too much. But it's just, it's an alternative way. Um, instead of getting a single response back, there are some APIs that will like uh, give you updates uh, multiple updates and rec perform stream deals with those as they come in. It's a little bit weird for R because normally, um, you know, you make a call and then you're done. And this will, uh, like, for example, it might update a file. You can give it a function that it'll call each time a piece comes in, it'll save it out. And I think they have this set up where it at least can be. Uh, where it doesn't stop you from working on other things within your R session. It'll just keep doing that thing in the background. Um, and then finally, there's rec options, which is kind of the catch-all of if you can't find how to do something in hitter two, rec options lets you send options directly to curl. And so if it's telling you some weird way to do something, uh, that is how you do it. And I'm trying to wrap up real quick because I have a delivery about to come to the door. Um, and so, yes, that is the end of this deck. And my dogs are telling me that there's a delivery. Um, like I said, next week, we're going to see how to find APIs. Um, 
and we will see a whole bunch more examples of um, probably at least post requests. Um, but I do have to run right now. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask on Slack and I will be sure to answer them. Oh. Bye. bye, John. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.